Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. And while I just shared a video talking about the first things I do when I get a new Mac and all my favorite settings to change and just the tips and tricks of setting up a new Mac, Sebastian, the, the founder of iDownloadBlog, has his own ritual every time he gets a new iPhone. And he always sets up his iPhones new so he can get a fresh start, but he always wants these settings to stay the same so he can get a consistent experience. So here are some of the things that he changes which might give you inspiration for when you're setting up your device or maybe a pre-existing device that you might wanna switch up some settings. Let's go ahead and talk about those features now. So the first thing he does is install 1Password, which is a password manager app. Now this depends on what you use to store your passwords. I sometimes have used 1Password in the past and it's really nice to store all your passwords in one place for any of your devices. And Apple also now lets you use password manager apps natively with your iOS devices. So if you're looking to store all of your passwords on one unified and secure system, this is a good way of doing that. And Sebastian always starts with that. So as he's signing into his new accounts, he's ready to go. So secondly, he goes into sound and haptics and he turns off the keyboard clicks and he turns off the keyboard clicks. Of course, you know the sound of the keyboard clicks when you're typing. And I will say, if you're in public with this on, it can be a bit annoying, but he likes to turn that off regardless. So no matter where he is, he doesn't have to worry about being that person. He also turns off the lock sound so that when he locks his device, he doesn't get the lock sound. Next, under general and date and time, he turns on the 24 hour time because he is from France and he just likes to have this on in general. Next, he deletes the stock apps that he never uses. For him, that's things like contacts, garage band, keynotes, clips, iMovie, and more. You know that, that tips app that's on your iPhone? It, you've never used that. You can just go ahead and delete that app free up some storage and some space on your phone. He also doesn't use the contacts app. Uh, I assume he's using Google contacts, but he deletes that as well because he doesn't use Apple contacts on his phone. Next, he creates a crapple folder where he puts all of the Apple apps that he doesn't want to delete, but that he doesn't use that often. Next, he adds a French keyboard. So he goes into keyboard and keyboards and he adds French. And of course, if you speak another language, you're going to want another keyboard on there and he speaks French, so he does that. And then he also goes into general and dictionary, and he makes sure that he has the French dictionary so that as he's typing and sending messages to people, he always has the ability to look up certain words and define them, whether it be French or English. And you can do this with any language, of course. And if you're trying to learn a language, sometimes it's nice to uh, put your phone in that language or send messages in that language and have the dictionary ready there to help you learn that language. Next, he goes to settings, general, and keyboard, and he turns on dictation, which isn't on by default. He's not sure why, maybe for privacy, so he turns that on. Now, before we go any further, I wanna give a quick mention to AnyTrans from iMobi, which is a really great multi-purpose tool for any of your iOS devices as well as Android, and it allows you to do a ton of things, such as create custom ringtones, transfer apps and media, convert HEIC, Apple's new high-res, um, high-efficiency standard to JPEGs really easily right from the software, and, and so many other backup tools as well. But they wanna talk specifically about the ability to transfer a WhatsApp from Android to iPhone. So without erasing any messages, it'll transfer WhatsApp from Android with the messages, the attachments, media files, and more and it will leave them on the Android phone while it transfers to the iPhone. So this will support any Android phone that you're switching from and all the models of the iPhone that you're switching to. So if you wanna be able to transfer all of your WhatsApp messages, attachments, media files, pictures, whatever, from an Android phone, you're able to do that with AnyTrans, as well as just a whole lot of other features. And I'll leave a link down in the description if you wanna check out AnyTrans for yourself and check out this software. Next, he goes down to messages, and then he goes to text message forwarding, and you make sure that all of his devices are turned on, because oftentimes you'll set up a new device and you won't have text message forwarding, and then you won't get your green text messages forwarded to those new devices. So you make sure that this is turned on for his new devices. Next, he goes down to messages, and he turns keep messages on for one year, so that after a year, it will delete all your old message and uh, prevent it from um, you know, just logging up with old photos and videos, which is a really nice way to actually keep your storage under control, especially for iCloud storage. Next, he goes to the phone settings, and there he turns on Wi-Fi calling, and you might have to go through your carrier in order to set this up, but this is supported by most carriers, and it will help you 
to use Wi-Fi for calls when you might have bad cellular. And then he also turns off call forwarding so that his calls don't go to all his other devices uh, when he gets a call on his phone. That's personal preference, whether you want that on or off. Next, he goes down to mail, and from there, he clicks on accounts, and that's where he can set up all of his email accounts so that they're all set up on his phone, which is definitely handy. Next, he turns the preview to three lines, so we get a little bit more of each email as it pops up in the mail app, which just helps to make sure that you can see what you're looking at before you click on it. He changes the swipe options to something he likes better, and then finally, he gets rid of the default signature so that he doesn't have sent from my iPhone uh, showing up on his emails. Next, he goes down to photos, and from there, he turns on iCloud Photos so that the photo library is available on all his devices, and then he optimizes iPhone storage so that he can save and delete high-resolution files as needed. Then he downloads all of his favorite apps and puts them into folders, which is gonna be a little bit different now with the app library. Uh, I, for instance, only really typically keep this page of apps um, on my screen, and then I will typically not have these other pages. So that's for me, and I'm sure Sebastian will change this a little bit with the uh, addition of the app library on the iPhone. Then he adds his favorite widgets. So of course, you can hold down your home screen and click the plus button, and then you can add widgets of your own and rearrange them as well to whatever you see fit. And if you wanna modify any of them, you tap on it, and you can usually find some different settings there. So for instance, whether I can change the location to wherever I want. Then he also goes into display and brightness and down to auto lock. And he makes sure that it is a minute instead of the 30 seconds that Apple has by default. I'd personally like it at two or three minutes. Then he goes into do not disturb or now focus and he uh, manually changes the settings that he likes for that, which is actually a really good move now that you can really customize the focus and do not disturb profiles to get exactly what you want. Then he goes under general and about and he changes the name every year to make sure that it represents the newest phone. So for my phone, it says iPhone 13 mini. For him, it would say iPhone 13 Pro. Then he goes down to Control Center and make sure that he has the controls that he wants. And they're not always gonna be the same every year. Uh, these are the ones that I personally have, but he'll put in the ones that he uses the most. For instance, for his Apple TV, he can turn on the Apple TV widget. Uh, I don't use an Apple TV at school, so I don't have that one turned on Control Center. Under the Face ID settings, he turns off attention aware or require attention. Uh, this will give him a little bit more flexibility when he is unlocking his phone. Next, he'll go down to contacts and he'll change the sort order from last first to first last. So that it sorts by first name rather than last name. He goes into the Wi-Fi settings and turns off ask to join networks. And then he'll just run through the settings and see if there's anything else that he forgot. So those are the settings that Sebastian uses for his iPhone. He's currently using the iPhone 13 Pro. Let me know what you think, and you can catch Sebastian and his podcast and the iDownload blog website, all linked down in the description. Thanks for watching.